How will Starship avoid the follies that the Space Shuttle suffered from in regards to its thermal protection system? The Space Shuttle was supposed to be rapidly reusable, but as NASA discovered, the thermal protection tiles needed significantly more in-depth checkouts between flights. This contributes to giving Shuttle a typical minimum turnaround time of four or five months. If SpaceX aims for rapid reuse with minimal or no safety checks between launches, how can they upgrade the TPS on Starship to meet those requirements? Find out everything in today's episode of TechMap. Turnaround flight is a familiar term in aviation. The lunar Starship will be equipped with four landing legs. In addition, the systems to launch a rocket and the rocket itself inherently are more complicated than the aircraft making the turnaround between the rocket's launches take more time. This puts an extremely big challenge for SpaceX's fully reusable Starship rocket, as Elon Musk aims to make it as quickly reusable as an airplane. It means that the vehicle's design needs to be greatly simplified, but it also must be safe enough to require minimal to no safety checks between the launches. And a notable component here is its thermal protection system, which plays a vital role in saving the spacecraft against the risk of becoming a giant fireball in space during its re-entry. There are indeed similarities between the thermal protection systems used on SpaceX's Starship spacecraft and NASA's retired Space Shuttle orbiter. It's certainly plausible that SpaceX's engineers drew inspiration from various thermal protection technologies, including those used on the Space Shuttle orbiter when designing the thermal tiles for the Starship spacecraft. The EATB Enhanced Avcoat Thermal Barrier Tiles with TUFI Toughened Unipiece Fibrous Insulation Coatings with Added Molybdenum Desilicide, which were introduced in the later years of the Space Shuttle program, were known for their improved durability and performance compared to earlier tile designs. The reason why few TUFI tiles were used on the shuttles is due to weight concerns. TUFI is less fragile than the older RCG Reaction Cured Glass coating, but also heavier. The incorporation of many very large fibers into the Starship tiles is indeed an interesting aspect, which could be by design or indicative of something else. While the spectral analysis indicates the presence of molybdenum, determining whether it's present at the same ratio as in NASA's tiles would require more detailed analysis and comparison. The presence of silica, alumina borosilicate and aluminum oxide in the fibrous material of the Starship tiles is consistent with the composition of the AETB tiles. This strongly suggests that the Starship thermal tiles are based on the research done during the shuttle program. However, the Starship team would never settle in the shuttle's old TPS, which exposed the fatal flaws of the shuttle's era. As a result, a revolutionary reform was applied to this modern space vehicle if Starship is to be rapidly reusable, then the heat shield will have to be much more durable and easier to repair than the complex and easily damaged Space Shuttle heat shield. Most of the 24,300 tiles on the Space Shuttle measure about 6 inches long on each side, 15.25 centimeters, and vary in thickness from 1 to 5 inches, 2.54 to 12.7 centimeters, depending on where they are attached. Honestly, they have various shapes, sizes and materials. This comes from the spacecraft's design with a complex curvature that extends in all three dimensions and the amount of heat affecting each location is not the same. Therefore, it required a wider covered area as well as a separate type of tile for each area. It seems to be inconvenient when shields from a certain area fall, you have to find an exact replacement for that area or take additional time to create new ones. By contrast, Starship's TPS is a collection of around 18,000 hexagonal ceramic tiles on one side of the craft. Such a uniform design allows the quicker replacement as you just make and copy a hexagon-shaped sort with the same material and size. They are made from a dense, tough ceramic called TUFROC, whereas the orbiter tiles had a fiber, foam, and aerogel core that was very insulating but was rather fragile and prone to absorbing moisture. TUFROC is suitable for reusable entry heating at 2900 plus Fahrenheit and with single use potential up to at least 3600 Fahrenheit. TUFROC was initially developed for NASA's X 37 project and ultimately resulted in use on the Air Force X 37B as the wing leading edge of the vehicle. 
TUFROC has similar high temperature capability compared with carbon slash carbon, but is manufactured at an order of magnitude lower cost and faster schedule. As you can see, the Starship requires fewer bricks than the shuttle, so it cuts down on the vehicle's dead mass. Because the Starship is so large, covering its entire body with heat shields is not an economically smart choice, so the spacecraft only has heat shields on one side. This makes sense because stainless steel on Starship is inherently heat resistant, so the Starbricks on one side is just an additional layer of protection as it re-enters Earth's atmosphere with the belly flop maneuver at high speed. The stainless steel surpasses aluminum used in NASA's spacecraft in resistance to heat. This means that your heat shielding material can be much lighter and more robust, which is exactly what SpaceX is doing. Stainless steel construction should be less vulnerable to small gaps between tiles, which should allow wider tolerances for installation and inspection and less susceptibility to minor damage. With the Space Shuttle's aluminum airframe, excessive heating can cause rapid and catastrophic melting of the structure. Most spacecraft use aluminum alloy airframes that lose all their effective strength at around 350 to 400 Celsius degrees. This places a high thermal burden on their heat shields, which must keep the inside temperature at a level below this in order to maintain their structural integrity. Instead of using glue technology to bond the tiles to the vehicle's hull like in the shuttle era, the Starship tiles appear to use pins to fasten tile. The rear of the tiles may have holes for some adhesive or threads with inserts. Underneath the tiles is the white insulation required to isolate the super-cold propellant in the tanks. All this will see temperature swings super cold on the stainless steel side when the propellant is loaded and super hot on the black tile side when returning from orbit. Besides contraction and expansion, everything will flex and bend from launch, flight, and return forces. So, all the insulation and tile must be allowed to move too. To top it off, hot gas on re-entry likes smooth surfaces, so any transitions create unique design challenges. The adhesive bonding method used to secure heat-resistant ceramic tiles to the body of the Space Shuttle Columbia is known for its inability to withstand high temperatures. Ceramic tiles are brittle, so using both the tiles and the adhesive bond creates a situation that is prone to malfunction and could spell trouble, says Deborah D. Chung. Niagara Mohawk Professor of Materials Research in the UB School of Engineering and Applied Sciences and Director of UB's Composite Materials Research Laboratory. In the case of Columbia, Chung speculates that cracked or missing tiles would have exposed adhesive silicone bonds to very high temperatures. This would cause the degradation of the bonds and the loss of more tiles exposing the shuttle body to extremely high temperatures upon re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere. According to Chung, there are other, more heat-resistant ways to connect tiles to the shuttle body. Brazing, which is like soldering except that it involves higher temperatures, creates joints able to withstand temperatures as high as 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit, depending on the brazing material used. In contrast, adhesive joints can only withstand much lower temperatures around 250 degrees Fahrenheit. Brazing, however, is a more expensive and involved process than adhesion. This could be a reason that it wasn't used for the Columbia, Chung says. Chung also suggests that NASA consider using a much higher proportion of carbon-carbon composites in place of aluminum to construct the shuttle's airframe. Carbon-carbon composite materials, which were in their infancy when the Columbia was built about 20 years ago, are now well developed. They are much more heat-resistant than aluminum and are considered to be the best material available today for high-temperature, lightweight structures. Chung says. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. If you want to explore more aspects of the world's most powerful rockets and the world of rockets in general, here is a selection of deeper dive videos for you. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.